So welcome, Scott, Kishore, Mahmoud. Thanks. Thanks, Bianca. Um, OK, well, let me go ahead and quickly introduce um, Helm 2 deprecation and what it means for you. One moment. So can you hear me okay? Okay, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, so um, so quick over, just a very quick rundown before we go into the case study with Kishore and Mahmoud. Um, just gonna give you a brief uh, description of the Helm II deprecation timeline. Um, the, uh, the charts repo deprecation step-by-step. -step. Um, I'll only review the steps briefly. You can actually look at the documentation and the links that I have in the end um, for further detail. Um, just note the distributed charts repo initiative that's continuing. And for those who are wondering, what am I going to do now that the charts, um, uh, the central charts repo are gone, I'm going to just mention briefly about how charts are discoverable still with Artifact Hub from CNCF. So here's a really funny, or not funny, but a cute little poem that someone wrote uh, from uh, the Jabberwocky. But um, essentially, the time has come, the maintainer said, to talk of software fates of upgrades and shipping help V3 of bug fixes and Kates. It's, uh, you may have seen this around because there's been a big deal about Helm 2 uh, going away. And today is the day, actually, the 13th, Friday the 13th. Um, so the things that you need to know for users just simply are that there are no Helm V2 releases at all, no security patches whatsoever as of today. Um, the Helm 2 documentation will also not have any further updates. Um, it will be available for a time period, um, but it will not necessarily last forever because this, will, this is now end of life. Um, uh, all issues and PRs are gonna be closed. Um, we're transitioning uh, the releases of Helm, the, the, the ownership to CNCF. Um, and uh, we're, um, and the, the, the actual central charts repo has been transitioned to GitHub pages. Um, I completed that last week and it's been running perfectly. Uh, <clears throat> the main things to know are that um, this is really just for Helm 2 people. So if you really don't care about Helm 2, just plug your ears for a second and it's fine. Uh, basically, if you need to download the client, um, uh, Google Cloud Storage is removed and now we've got um, get.helm.sh. Again, I'll, you'll, you'll be able to see this later. You don't have to write this down now. Um, Docker image, uh, images um, for Tiller from Google Container Registry, those have all been moved um, to GitHub's Container Registry. And the Google Cloud buckets for the, the, uh, the central chart repos, the stable and incubator, have now been moved to GitHub pages. And they're now, um, they're now uh, in specific URLs and it's on the Helm blog. And I've got um, uh, some more information about that if you need it later. OK, so uh, the main point that you may have noticed I'm trying to impress upon you is it really is time to upgrade to Helm 3 if, if you can. At least consider it, um, because there are many reasons to do so now. So uh, there's a link here for Helm 2 to 3 migration in general. And then Kishore and Mahmood are going to cover um, the Flux migration. Um, just a few more quick points before they do. Um, the charts repo deprecation. Uh, you can really just kind of read this later. There are recommended actions for specific dates. Um, the most important one is you'll notice that as of later today, if you try to use the old charts repo URLs, they will no longer work. If you have the updated uh, Helm client, both two and three, you'll get a warning about this and there will be information showing you output telling you where to go next. Um, so the, the repo locations have changed. I'm just gonna glance over this for now because it's, it's available elsewhere, including on the Helm blog. Um, the one thing I wanna note is that the, not all of the charts in the central charts repo do have new homes yet. The adoption process by other organizations um, whether they're the official organizations, the maintainers that uh, of those applications that those charts install, or whether it's uh, a separate um, uh, organization like, say, JFrog, Bitnami, um, uh, or, or say, just your own personal uh, chart maintainership, um, you, can, you can do this. And we've got tools to help, to help this. Uh, I'm not going to go over them all now, but essentially we've got tools for 
uh, for testing charts and for releasing charts. If you want to do it all in GitHub, it's fairly straightforward. So um, there's an excellent write-up at the end here. Um, these slides will be made available but, uh, to show you how to continue um, to maintain Git history when you move those charts over so that you can have some real continuity there into the new location. Um, and uh, there's, a, there's an issue that I started <laughs> about a year ago, uh, which, is, uh, which is showing the progress of this initiative. So please join us and feel free to ping me on Slack and otherwise, if you have any questions. Um, one more note is, well, where are they going? Or how can I find them? Well, CNCF started this project called Artifact Hub, which is a central hub for OLM operators, uh, Falco rules, Helm charts, and other, other uh, cloud native artifacts or packages. And these are, this is something you can publish to and something as an end user you can look to to find where those distributed charts actually live now and how to install them. So uh, check this, these slides later for the references because there are a lot of them. Um, the Helm 2 deprecation was kind of a big deal. So this is a very quick breeze over, but it's been covered in depth elsewhere. So. Uh, I'm going to move on now to Mahmoud and Kishore for their case study. Thank you, Scott. Um, I I want I just wanted to say um, DJ Desired State's really good. <laughs> yeah, really killing it today. Uh, so yeah, so now um, Kishore and myself will be talking about the case study at uh, Fidelity Investments. Um, so Kishore, if you're there, uh, if you can enable your um, your video and your screen share. Hey, Kishore, hey. how are you doing? Hey, Mahmoud. Hey, I'm good. Thanks. Hey. How are you? Doing well, doing well. Are you excited? Good. Thank you. To, uh, yeah. To start today? Cool. Yeah, let's do yeah. It. So let me start sharing the screen. Yeah. Okay, cool. So do you all see my screen? Yeah, looks great. Yeah, cool. Thank you. So uh, hi, folks, everybody. Uh, welcome to our talk, uh, GitOps case study with uh, Fidelity Investments. I am Kishore. I'm a cloud technologist at Fidelity and my co-host, uh, Mahmoud, uh, a cloud uh, reliability engineer at Weaveworks. So today we're going to uh, uh, talk about how Fidelity started adopted, uh, adopting GitOps and then how we are doing it uh, today and our story of how we done the uh, hand to migration as, you, as you've heard the, the deprecation and, uh, uh, and some uh, internal knowledge about how we are doing the add-ons management with Helm operator and uh, how we are going to uh, do the GitOps uh, with Flux2 in, in future. So let's get started. Um, hey, Kishore, before we get started, can you mm -hmm. uh, kind of briefly describe what Fidelity is to the audience? Yeah, sure, definitely. Uh, so yeah, like uh, you might not all be aware of Fidelity. So Fidelity is, a, is one of the uh, largest uh, uh, asset management company. We have uh, about 3.3 uh, .3 trillion under uh, uh, assets under management. We do... Uh, brokerage uh, services and uh, uh, we have retirement services, like a lot of other financial services, cryptocurrency. Uh, so it's sort of like a bank uh, 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 to put it. And uh, everything uh, that uh, Fidelity does is quite uh, uh, sensitive and it's monitored uh, and audited as, like all other financial organizations. Um, so uh, and each of these these uh, these um, uh, services, right? Like like I mentioned, uh, brokerage firm, mutual funds, index funds, they all have their own uh, business units inside Fidelity, and they are sort of like their own companies inside Fidelity. So it's sort of like it's like a parent company and like for for a lot of other companies inside Fidelity. And uh, just to give the scale of the business units, right? Uh, uh, one of our largest b business unit has like about uh, 10,000 uh, associates um, in it. So that's the scale of uh, uh, business units. And um, yeah, uh, so our uh, how we started adopting GitOps, right? Uh, we started our Kubernetes journey about like uh, two years ago uh, from now. And uh, uh, we, we knew that it's going to be a big uh, big thing at Fidelity and we are going to have like hundreds of clusters to manage at Fidelity. 
and uh, uh, we have been fortunate enough uh, to uh, to be able to choose GitOps uh, since the beginning uh, with the scale of uh, the number of clusters and having to maintain the uh, state of the clusters uh, to a desired uh, uh, source of truth uh, from a desired source of truth and uh, to do to do uh, all that uh, GitOps is 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 the solution and uh, and that's the reason why we have uh, adopted GitOps and uh, uh, how we are doing it uh, is is uh, basically uh, we have uh, we 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 release a platform version of uh, fidelity kubernetes uh, platform uh, let's say it's 118 uh, 1.1.0 uh, with a bunch of additional components added on top of uh, kubernetes which will offer uh, uh, functionalities that are specific to fidelity and some uh, some other general features as well mm -hmm. And we we create uh, uh, a version out of these uh, these additional components along with uh, 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 Kubernetes. Uh, so we call that uh, uh, platform specific. So if it's uh, if it's a EKS version, then we say like 1.18.18 feed EKS 1.0.0, which will uh, be composed of uh, multiple other components uh, with specific versions uh, pinned to them. And that's how we distribute the software uh, to uh, the BU uh, cluster owners, and uh, they have the they have the flexibility to choose and uh, um, uh, uh, upgrade their clusters to their specific version whenever they want. And uh, each cluster will have its own uh, Git repo behind the scenes, right? So uh, here is like a glimpse of like how the pipeline looks like. Uh, the upper circle uh, represents the platform version uh, that we are releasing, uh, which is pinned to a version uh, in Git and has has all the uh, uh, additional components also pinned to a particular version, and that is distributed to the BUs as as a as a platform version. And the BUs uh, when they want to uh, Pick a new version of a, of a, a platform. They interact with our CI/CD pipeline, which will offer them to the possible versions that they can go to uh, from their current version, and uh, and that will let them choose some additional configurations, such as the size of the cluster, any tagging, tagging for resources, etc. Uh, like not changing anything under uh, on the platform, but just the configuration part of it, and uh, they can uh, choose the configuration and uh, uh, push the configuration to a Git repo. And that's where the uh, full uh, cluster reconciliation will start. So this is sort of like both push and pull model. Push is sort of triggered by the uh, BU uh, cluster owner by picking the platform version and then the uh, configuration into Git repo. And then uh, we have the uh, components inside the cluster uh, watching for the Git repo and uh, uh, pulling the changes uh, applied to the cluster uh, one by one. Uh, the add-ons uh, or these additional components that are on top of Kubernetes, right? They are applied uh, 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 one after other uh, based on uh, uh, some quality gates uh, being passed. Uh, we have like quality gates and uh, governance gates be, uh, before uh, things go to production. Only, only uh, the the ones that are passed will be uh, deployed. And then, if there is any problem in between, uh, the deployment will be halted. And then, uh, um, some someone needs to like sort of introspect uh, what's happening. And then, uh, if if something needs to be fixed, or, or otherwise, the the uh, reconciler will take care of uh, bringing the cluster to the desired state that is uh, defined in the Git repo. And uh, uh with uh with this is this is how the current uh current uh GitOps model look like uh at fidelity and recently uh, uh uh we had to do this helm migration right as as you all know helm 2 is deprecated and we started with helm 2 and we have like uh uh, uh like i said like we have about like 200 clusters uh currently running and uh, we had to do migration for all these clusters right and uh, we want to give a seamless experience to to our BU partners so that they don't have to like uh, do any any additional step. It's it's it has to be like a click of a button for them, and all the migration has to be taken care uh, uh, seamlessly. And uh, and uh, with that uh, and with that information, uh, we we are managing our our uh, components uh, using Helm releases, right? And then. Um, the Helm operator is uh, is a is a natural choice for uh, for us having having this feature, and 
uh, we 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 have put the effort to contribute back to the Helm operator uh, to add this functionality um, to migrate any Helm charts that are at Helm two, two three, and uh, yeah, that uh, Helm Helm two to three uh, um, contribution to the Helm operator. Uh, has helped us migrating all the Helm charts from two to three in, across all our clusters seamlessly. That has been like a like a really good experience for for our BU partners. Yeah, and uh, and I'll hand over to Mahmoud, uh, who has who has uh, done the efforts with the, uh, in in Helm operator uh, for the migration from two to three. And yeah, hey Mahmoud, please please take over and uh, and uh, give the demo. Sorry, I was trying to, to unmute. Can you hear me okay? Uh, yep, I can hear you. Perfect. Uh, so yeah, so uh, thank you, Kishore, for, uh, uh, for that great uh, introduction. So um, yeah, as you can tell, Fidelity is running multiple clusters uh, in the hundreds of clusters, right? And in order to do a migration of Helm 2 to 3 uh, with minimal uh, impact or the least amount of impact, uh, it has to be well crafted, if you will. And using the Helm operator uh, was a great opportunity for us to do this in a seamless way. So um, the Helm operator for a while supported both Helm 2 and Helm 3 Helm releases, or the, C the custom resource called Helm releases. And, um, but there was no way to migrate uh, an existing release from Tiller into the Helm 3 format, right? Um, and in order to do this, we had to do um, um, basically implement this inside the Helm operator. So uh, this diagram or this flow chart describes the flow of uh, the algorithm, how it decides what to do with the custom resource. Um, and we'll show a demo of this uh, in action right after. So the way this works is we have, uh, we get a new Helm release that's applied in the cluster. Uh, and the first thing we check is, is this a, v a V3 uh, release and uh, does it exist in the cluster? Is there an existing V3 release in the cluster? Uh, if so, then we just proceed and pretend it's an upgrade action. If not, we check if there is a V2 release in, t in the Tiller storage. And we also check for a new annotation that will show. And if both are true, um, then we go ahead and migrate the Helm. Uh, we run the two to three plugin uh, inside the operator and then do any upgrades that are necessary. If none of this is true, then it's a brand new V3 release and we just install that Helm release. So I'm gonna switch to my uh, terminal. Uh, so we have, uh, oh, actually uh, we have this repo uh, that you can run through the demo yourself later. Uh, but basically in this repo, uh, we'll walk through how do we can set this up. So the first thing we need is we need a, a kind cluster. So um, I'm gonna, uh, and I have the copy of these instructions up here to make it easier. So I'm gonna follow uh, these steps here. So the first thing, let's check that we have a kind cluster running. And indeed we do. So I can go ahead and do um, uh, install tiller. So let's start with, sorry about that. So I'm gonna copy these commands. And as you can tell from, if you're familiar with tiller, this is a standard installation of tiller. We're setting up the, the RBAC rules for Tiller and then we're calling Helm to init. Uh, and you can see Tiller already exists, so it didn't do anything, but, uh, but these are the steps how I set it up basically. Um, next up is um, we, are, we install the Helm operator uh, with version 1.1.0, which did not support the two to three migration. Um, so let's run these steps real quick. So we're creating a brand new Flux namespace. We're installing uh, the Helm, oper uh, Helm operator 1.1.0. And uh, Kishore, if you have any questions along the demo, please feel free to uh, ask them. Um, uh, sure. So I see I see the, the flags there, V2 and V3. Does it mean that this operator uh, supports both, uh, this version of the operator supports both Helm, Helm V2 charts and V3 charts? Yeah, thanks, but thanks for asking. Yeah, um, so this, uh, this means that the, these are Helm values. So we're using Helm 3 to install the Helm operator itself. And uh, what we're doing here is we're setting a, a configuration for the operator to say you can support both uh, Helm 2 and Helm 3 side by side. 
Um, mm. And the first one that you mentioned here becomes the default. So it's defaulting to V2. If you don't explicitly mention a version, it's going to default to V2. So yeah, okay. great question. So it's going to use Helm 2 to install the installer upgrade that chart if it's not defined as, uh, as a default option. So if you change the order, that's going to change the default or default uh, value for Helm. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Let me make sure uh, we don't have any Helm releases already. Oh, OK. So I need to, I'm going to delete this old one uh, for the demo. So I'm going to say delete HR weave scope. OK, so we should have. Oh, sorry. Yeah, can you hear me now? Sorry about that, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, I deleted the Helm release uh, that I had, and I'm going to go through the demo now. So, so let me, uh, so I have a V2 file here. I'm using bat, which is like cat, but anyway, uh, it just makes it more easy to read and uh, more uh, syntax highlighted. So we can see this is a Helm release, a standard CRD instance for uh, a Hel an Helm operator resource. And here uh, we're setting the standard Helm values for weave scope in this case. Um, so nothing special here. The only thing is that it's going to be a V2 release since that's the default. We didn't explicitly set the spec Helm version here. Uh, so when I apply this V2 uh, manifest, uh, we expect that when we run Helm 2 LS that we will see weave scope show up. And indeed, there it is. Um, and what this means is the operator picked up the new V2 CRD, applied it to the cluster, and Tiller has access to it now, uh, right? Um, so now we want to move to V3. So in order to do this, we have to upgrade our operator. And we need to do some changes to the manifest. So I'm going to open the V3 YAML again. So, so this is if the we do, oh, yeah, can I ask ahead. a question? Sorry, if you do help, uh, V3 without uh, with, on the same operator, uh, what do you think the expected behavior would be? Um, so if we just switch, you mean if we just switch the Helm version to V3? Yeah, so, yeah. So, so it would try to install it as a brand new um, okay. chart. And mm -hmm. it will it will probably run into issues, right? Because okay, you're probably going to ha end up with two different versions of the application running in the cluster, right? Which is, or, which is not you want don't want to have, right? Cool. Yeah, yeah, and you it will probably get stuck. The operator will probably get stuck and say, I I already have this resource. It's managed yeah, by another that's by, true. by Tiller. I'm not sure what to do, kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's a great question. Um. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's cool. Yeah. Perfect. So, so yeah, so we, uh, so, so here we have the v3.yaml, which is a, a replica of the v2.yaml with the new annotation that says migrate set to true. And uh, just, I want to mention also that if you just want to test the migration, you can set this to dry dash run. And that just makes it so that the log, the, the two to three logs get printed out in the operator, but it doesn't actually do the migration. Uh, but now for the demo, we actually want to do the migration and we also set the Helm version explicitly to V3. So these are the only two changes we made, uh, which are one and two up here in the docs. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and upgrade the operator itself to version 1.2.0, which does support the uh, two to three plugin. Mm -hmm. We're still going to have the same defaults, the same V2, V3. We want to support both side by side. But the difference is now you can actually run this migration. So. How do we do this? Uh, we All we have to do is apply the v3.yaml. So I'm going to copy this. And now what we expect is that the Helm 2 tiller release would basically disappear. And there it is. It, it went away. And now if I run Helm 3 ls, we can see the weave scope um, uh, release was migrated. And I can check the Helm resource as well, the Helm release CRD. And uh, we see that it is still in a deployed status it's been up for two minutes and 42 seconds since the Helm 2 uh, version, right? So it's the same CR CRD instance uh, with the same age. The difference is it was migrated from, from Tiller to the V3 storage system, uh, which are, I believe, config maps, if I remember, or secrets. I forget, but yeah. Cool, this is cool. So it has now seamlessly migrated uh, your uh, Helm 2 chart to Helm 3. Yep, exactly. And we can check this in the logs explicitly. So if I go here, uh, we can go up into the logs. And we we can see here the Helm 2, uh, 2 to 3 output uh, of that Helm release migration, 
yeah. Mm -hmm. So there is no uh, info, info uh, the info is probably also available in the uh, Helm release as well, right? Uh, uh, oh, you mean like the, 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 the status itself? of the migration? Yeah, the CRD itself. Yeah, you could you also can, check the status from there. You can see that, yeah, as well. So let's let's switch back here. So if I say Helm releases, so we can see that it's still in a succeeded deployed uh, yeah. status. Uh, but during the migration, I believe it goes into migrate phase, and then mm -hmm. it goes into the succeeded phase. So it okay. does go through the, those stages. Yep. Okay, that's cool. Cool. Okay. I think I think that's it for me. Uh, I'm gonna switch it back to Kishore, who is gonna talk about how uh, Fidelity. So uh, we did this migration from two to three at Fidelity for hundreds of clusters. So how do we now move to Flux two and uh, also some announcements from Fidelity, which uh, Kishore will share. So I'm going to stop now. Let me start my share here. Can you see my screen? Yep. Cool. Uh, thanks, Mahmoud. That was an awesome demo uh, to see the Helm 2 to 3 migration uh, in action by the Helm operator. And uh, yeah, like Mahmoud said, uh, it, this has helped us migrating from uh, Helm 2 to 3 in uh, across all our clusters and have, giving a seamless experience to our BU partners. That was that was a that was a nice experience. So uh, let's go through. Yeah. So next, we're going to uh, check the add-ons management uh, with Helm operator. So What's an add-on before going to the add-on management? So add-on is like an additional component that we that we add on top of uh, Kubernetes to offer uh, a set of functionality uh, for uh, for for our business needs, right? So uh, we have like uh, uh, we use external DNS for DNS, and we have cluster order scaler, uh, vertical part order scaler. Uh, Components like that, so we we add additional components on top of Kubernetes, and then we call we call it uh, um, a version of a platform, and that's how we distribute the uh, uh, the software to uh, our BU partners at Fidelity. And the these add-ons have have dependencies between uh, between them. For example, uh, we have a cert manager that is deployed as part of the add-ons, and uh, uh, cert manager is 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 a uh, need a dependency for vertical power order scaler or any other uh, 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 component which has like a, a need for certificates to be created, right? So uh, in that uh, in in with that kind of dependency, uh, we are currently we currently have like an internal component which will take care of these kind of dependencies uh, to go to to ensure that uh, each dependent add-on is deployed uh, in in an order specified, and then. Um, uh, it also ensures that uh, uh, each add-on is uh, is passing the quality gates. Uh, we use Helmtest. Uh, Helmtest is one of our quality uh, part of our quality gates, which will give us back uh, uh, if the deployment is functioning as as uh, as as needed. And then, uh, if everything looks good, we go to the next uh, add-on uh, in the in the list and deploy that particular add-on, and go, so on. And and as we as we uh, as we do this, uh, uh, we we deploy each add-on, uh, meaning we apply the Helm release basically to uh, Helm operator, and Helm operator is going to pick up these add-ons and then uh, add-ons Helm releases, and then apply them to the cluster. And uh, Helm operator is going to ensure uh, and it has the credentials to pull the uh, to pull the um, uh, new charts uh, that are defined in the Helm releases, and then apply them to the cluster and um, yeah, that's how we 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 do the management today, um, and uh, here is uh, a glimpse of uh, our uh, 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 platform version. Here is an, this is just an example here. Like uh, uh, the the initial part indicates one 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 six is like the uh, referring to the Kubernetes version, and then FinEKS is the platform, and then the version of uh, the uh, platform with all the set of add-ons. So you see there are like uh, plenty of uh, other add-ons used in, in this list, like Cert Manager pointing to v zero one one fifteen six or or, uh, or ALB in Ingress Controller 2.2.9. So these are all pinned uh, to a specific version of the platform uh, that is that is given to the uh, BUs. And uh, 
we have uh, each of these these uh, add-ons having dependencies, right? We define we define these dependent uh, add-ons as as uh, as one a layer. So we consider like if if these set of add-ons are dependent on another set of add-ons. So we consider them as layers, and it's easy to to from the uh, consumer point of view, like a B for for the BU, it's easy to understand uh, uh, how a particular layer is functioning. If we if we have like a security layer or or a common layer or 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 uh, or, an, or some sort of application specific layer called M ML layer, right? So the bunch of add-ons will will form this layer, and uh, that will sort of uh, make make it easy for for our BU partners to understand how the layers are functioning, right? Yeah, and uh, how how what we are going to do uh, uh, with uh, uh, our our GitOps uh, strategy in future is uh, we we are uh, announcing uh, a new project called Cron uh, that is built on top of uh, uh, GitOps uh, uh, Flux two, and what this is this is going to do is this this is going to offer us uh, a mechanism to manage. Uh, manage the uh, layers um, of add-ons uh, so that they are cross-functional across the the uh, cloud providers. Like let's say here in this in this image, you you can sort of like uh, uh, see there is a security layer, there is a common layer, there is the uh, there is the uh, platform specific layer, and uh, this is sort of like helping us to abstract uh, abstract the. Uh, a set of add-ons which are dependent on on other set of add-ons, and then uh, also give the consumer of the uh, of the platform a good understanding about the health of the cluster uh, uh, in a in a good way. So uh, let's take a closer look at uh, closer look at uh, a layer, right? So here is here is an example of, uh, of a common layer. Uh, uh, currently, the layer is composed of a bunch of Helm releases, but the plan is to have additional Kubernetes resources as well, not just Helm releases. Re uh, resources like customize or, or any other uh, plain manifest as well. Uh, that's a plan to have. Uh, so uh, in this example here, uh, we have a common layer which is uh, which is a prerequisite for the management layer. So what Cron is going to do is it ensures that the, all the uh, Helm releases in this common layer goes together uh, and uh, are deployed before uh, going to the next layer, which is the management layer. So Cron gives this flexibility of trying to helping us manage the dependencies be between the layers, and uh, and it's it's a mix and match. So it, you might know that the Helm controller, Helm operator has a dependency feature as well. So it, you can define like a Helm release, a, a Helm release X is dependent on Helm release Y. So that is still there intact, and and this is just on top of what Helm Helm operator offer, offers. Uh, you can still have you can have uh, dependencies between the layers, right? Yeah. So that's that's our uh, our plan for uh, uh, future. Uh, and this is an uh, open source project, and uh, we uh, welcome any uh, additional uh, contributions to it. Uh, and here are the links for for the uh, cron. That's the first link there, uh, Kran. Please uh, go ahead and uh, check it out, and um, and the demo that that's done today uh, is also available. You can all you can always go and uh, try it out by yourself. Uh, uh, it's pretty cool uh, to see it in action doing the migration, and uh, we would also like to mention about another cool project. Uh, it's a bit unrelated to GitOps, but it's a, it's a, a nice project for if you have uh, if you're operating. Uh, in multi uh, cloud with multi cloud providers like AKS, EKS, GCP, uh, this is uh, a project that we started. Uh, K Connect. It is to uh, connect to your Kubernetes clusters with, across the cloud platform providers. Yeah. So, and we are also hiring. Uh, please uh, um, uh, look at our our careers page and uh, and uh, if you are interested, please uh, go ahead. And then um, we are open for questions.